Hi guys, Dr. Rob Barrington here with some more nutrition advice. Um, I'd like to talk uh, briefly today about biotin and biotin deficiencies. Now, uh, biotin is a member of uh, the B uh, group of vitamins, uh, and it's sometimes referred to as vitamin B7. It's water soluble and therefore is needed uh, in small amounts every day because it's not stored uh, in the body to any great extent. Uh, biotin biochemically is required as a cofactor for a number of uh, carboxylase enzymes and they are um, pyruvate carboxylase, uh, propionyl CoA carboxylase, acetyl CoA carboxylase uh, and beta methyl crotonyl CoA, uh, CoA carboxylase. Um, now those enzymes are involved uh, in glucose metabolism, in fatty acid metabolism uh, and amino acid uh, catabolism. Um, and therefore, um, biotin has quite uh, wide-ranging functions as a cofactor for those enzymes. Um, biotin is also uh, part of the structure of histones uh, on DNA molecules, and that means uh, it probably has some kind of uh, effect in terms of gene regulation uh, and protein synthesis, although that function is not quite so well understood. Um, now, biotin is interesting uh, because deficiencies of biotin are actually very rare. Uh, biotin is quite widely uh, present in most foods of uh, plant origin uh, and it's particularly uh, concentrated uh, in green leafy vegetables. Uh, so things like spinach, they have high concentrations of folic acid, they also have quite high concentrations of biotin. In animal foods, uh, biotin is not so widely distributed. Uh, it's present really only uh, in liver uh, and eggs. Um, uh, also, our microorganisms uh, in our gut synthesize small amounts of biotin for us. Um, now, if we go to eggs, eggs are quite interesting with regard to biotin because eggs contain a substance called avidin. Uh, and avidin is a protein in the egg white uh, that actually binds four molecules of uh, biotin. Um, and this is quite problematic because if somebody eats large amounts of egg whites, uh, they can actually irreversibly bind uh, biotin in their gut to the avidin, uh, and this is not available for absorption. Uh, now, the avidin is a protein, and when it's bound to the biotin, obviously the biotin can't be absorbed. Um, and there's a lot of evidence to show that our digestive enzymes, our, our proteases in our, in, in our gastrointestinal tract are not able to break down the avidin once it's bound to the biotin and therefore the biotin uh, passes through us and is excreted uh, and we don't absorb the biotin. Now although uh, deficiency uh, symptoms of actual biotin, biotin deficiencies are rare, um, you can uh, actually induce biotin deficiency by eating large amounts of egg whites. Um, now, initially, this was discovered when uh, experiments were done uh, on animals, uh, and it was found that if you feed laboratory animals uh, a high-quality diet with all the vitamins and minerals they need, but if you base uh, their diet uh, towards uh, the inclusion of a lot of egg whites, uh, what you find is that they actually start to get uh, a dermatitis of the skin, their hair falls out, uh, they tend to get redding, reddening of the skin, uh, they tend to develop a, a scaly skin um, and these are the symptoms of a, a biotin deficiency. Um, there were observations made in the 30s uh, on the development of eczema in children who were fed, uh, who were consuming egg white. Um, and then a human study was done in the 40s um, whereby uh, humans were fed egg whites um, and they developed very similar symptoms to the animals. Uh, they developed a dermatitis, um, they developed a scaly skin, uh, they had uh, uh, um, problems with their skin in general but particularly particularly around the around the eyes that you would uh, in, in a similar way to the animals. Uh, but they also developed, the longer they stayed on the egg white diet, uh, they also develop, developed other symptoms including uh, neurological problems, uh, they became depressed um, and they had uh, problems with their appetite. So uh, the symptoms of biotin uh, deficiency are actually quite rare but they can be induced uh, through uh, eating high amounts of egg white. Um, now there are a lot of uh, uh, stories about of people uh, consume, telling you not to consume uh, raw eggs uh, but it's, it's, it's worth bearing in mind that you need two factors in order to be able to uh, induce a biotin deficiency through uh, inclusion of egg white in your diet. Firstly, you need a lot of egg white. 
um, that the the animal studies that were done um, on uh, to induce biotin deficiency with egg white they they included about fifty percent of the of the of the energy of the animals as egg white so that's quite a large amount uh, of egg white uh, the human studies that were done I think were uh, included about thirty percent uh, of the calories uh, of the humans as egg white so you have to consume uh, large amounts of egg white for this to have an effect the other thing you require is that you need a, di a, di a diet that is deficient in biotin you, you, it's very difficult to induce uh, biotin deficiencies uh, inclusion, through inclusion of egg white in your diet if you have adequate biotin uh, in your diet. Generally you need those two factors together in order to be able to induce a biotin deficiency. So those people that consume the odd uh, egg uh, in its raw state uh, will not generally uh, develop any kind of symptoms of a uh, biotin deficiency because uh, we consume biotin at every meal but we don't consume egg white at every meal so even if at one meal uh, you consume an egg and it binds all the, the biotin uh, in that particular meal at subsequent meals where you're not consuming raw eggs uh, the biotin will be absorbed uh, as if it was uh, it, uh, normally and therefore uh, it will replete yourself of any uh, deficiency you have in biotin and biotin is widely available uh, if you eat a, a very high plant-based food if you eat a lot of green leafy vegetables your diet will be uh, very high in biotin anyway uh, and obviously I always recommend that you take a multivitamin and mineral uh, and a multivitamin and mineral uh, will also contain a, a, a quite high amounts of biotin as well so it's very actually very difficult unless you consume very high amounts of egg whites to actually uh, cause this uh, this problem of a biotin deficiency through consumption of eggs now the reason that uh, it's raw eggs that cause uh, that can induce a biotin deficiency uh, but not cooked eggs is because when we cook the eggs we denature the protein uh, in the eggs um, if you take egg white and you have a look at it in its raw state uh, it's clear um, when you cook it it goes to a white color now that white discoloration of the original uh, transparency uh, of the egg white um, is due to the fact that the proteins in the egg white are being denatured and one of the proteins uh, in the egg white, avidin, the one that binds biotin, is also denatured through heat. So if you cook the egg white, you denature the avidin and you destroy its ability to bind biotin. And this is why it's only raw eggs that can bind, uh, that can bind to biotin in the gut and it's only raw eggs uh, that will cause or induce uh, biotin deficiencies uh, in animals. So as long as you're cooking your eggs, you have no risk uh, of, of developing a biotin deficiency through uh, ingestion of egg white. It's only a raw egg white that has this effect. So really, is there a take home message from this? Well, really, I wanted to say this because there are uh, stories about people uh, eating egg white and developing biotin deficiency. How true those stories are uh, is, uh, is open to question because the studies that have been done, they did have to try very hard uh, over quite long periods of time in order to be able to cause the animals to, or the humans to be able to develop um, uh, deficiencies of biotin and that required a, a, a diet that was uh, lower in biotin as well as high amounts of egg white so f it's not very common to eat uh, raw eggs but um, you know for example bodybuilders do consume raw eggs perhaps in um, in drinks in, pro in protein drinks although it's not quite so common now with the availability of whey protein and there are some foods that do contain uh, raw egg um, but they are quite rare and because of that as long as you're eating a balanced diet and you're not deliberately putting egg whites into your diet in a raw state for any reason I don't think there's any reason uh, that that would uh, induce a biotin deficiency uh, and obviously if you take a multivitamin there's a lot of biotin generally in a multivitamin as long as you take it at some point in the day away from eating uh, the point where you eat raw eggs uh, that's going to provide the biotin that you require uh, in, uh, in your body for your metabolism so I think the take home message from this video really is that um, biotin deficiencies are very rare even if you consume egg whites um, you are very unlikely to develop a, a biotin deficiency unless you consume lots and lots of egg whites and you also consume a very poor quality diet that's deficient in biotin uh, one thing that is worth saying though is that we know what um, symptoms are caused uh, by uh, actual deficiency in biotin 
but with as with many vitamins and minerals there is this uh, new classification between a deficiency uh, and being in a replete state that we call a vitamin insufficiency and because we don't fully understand how biotin works biochemically in the body it might be that many uh, subclinical symptoms exist from those people with low intakes of biotin who aren't quite deficient um, for example, the, the effects of, of, of biotin on the histones uh, in our, on our genetic material, it's not fully understood. And there may actually be other roles for biotin in the body. And this is one reason that I suggest uh, people do take a multivitamin and mineral, because although biotin is widely available in foods and biotin deficiency is very rare, because we don't understand the vitamin fully, it might be there are other symptoms, other diseases that relate to a low intake of biotin that aren't actually a biotin deficiency um, uh, that, that have not been discovered yet and this way by taking a multivitamin you cover yourself against getting a, a vitamin insufficiency and putting yourself at risk of, of developing a disease that we don't really understand its link uh, cu currently we don't understand its link to the vitamin um, and that's one of the biggest uh, uh, arguments for taking a multivitamin to make sure that you have uh, intakes of vitamins at the top end of the scale, uh, particularly of the water soluble vitamins that aren't toxic. Uh, there's no, uh, there's no uh, real safety concerns over many of the B vitamins. They can be taken in quite high amounts. So it's good insurance to make sure that you do take optimal amounts of the B vitamins to ensure that you don't slip into this, uh, this insufficient area where you could possibly be developing uh, subclinical uh, deficiencies uh, that may put you uh, at risk of idiopathic uh, diseases that we don't fully understand. Uh, and if you're interested uh, in uh, understanding further the role of a biotin in biotinidase, which is the, the form of biotin that's associated with the histines on genetic material, uh, I'll put the link uh, to a paper that has uh, investigated and reviewed this role uh, so that you can read that and you can find that, uh, out some more details of that. I'll put that in the comments box below this video.